Hi, I'm Alana Eastman, and welcome to our online service. If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you the way out so that, that you can endure. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 12 to 13. Good morning. Welcome to our online service, Harlan Community Church. I'm Pastor Chad Edelman. Today we're starting a new series called The Bible Doesn't Say That. Uh, we're gonna be dealing with some things. Um, Christians say a lot, kind of cliches or advice or just, some of it's good, some of it's bad. Some of it's just things that we have been passed down to us and traditional phrases, cliches that are, um, they're well-intended. We tell these people these things and we believe that they're from the Bible because we've been taught, like I said. But they can actually hurt people more than it helps people. We can guilt people. Um, we can shame people by telling them these things, and we don't really think about it at the time. 
the ultimate goal for the next four weeks is to clear up some of these misconceptions that we have and help us realize that the Bible doesn't say that. Today we start with perhaps the biggest one and so many well-meaning people, not even Christians, just people in general will say this phrase. And uh, when someone's lost a job or going through a divorce or has found out they have a bad um, illness or someone in their family does, and um, we hear this phrase so often. But um, instead of me telling you what it is, we're going to watch this video. And um, the video will show you. And then we'll come back here and talk about it. I just can't do it anymore. I have nothing left. Between the divorce, the cancer, your mom dying and being laid off, I know it feels like you're going through a lot. Believe me, I have been there. Just remember, when God closes a door, he opens a window. And never forget, God never gives you more than you can handle. Uh, uh, uh. God never said that. Oh, I've got another one if you want to take a shot. Yeah, they come as a pair. Bring it. Wow, that was a little bit dramatic. But we get the idea. And some of us have been in that place, that place of discouragement, that place of hopelessness where everything seems to be falling on us. Um, a lot of us may feel that way now with everything going on. Um, we can't get back to work. I'm um, getting frustrated at home. Just things are, are going bad, losing a job, trying to find a job. And uh, some well-meaning person will come up to us and say, hey, I know things are hard. I know things seem like there's, they're never gonna get better. But don't worry, God will never give you more than you can handle. And it sounds great, right? Oh, good, God's not gonna give me more than I can handle. But here's the problem, scripture never says that. That's not what it says at all. There's this false idea out there that life gets better or perfect once you become a Christian, once you accept Christ. But Jesus says many times in the Bible that things will get harder, that the world will hate you because of me. But to take heart because he's overcome the world. It's with him. And it does say, like in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Jesus promised us to lift our burdens, that he will be there with us, doing these things with us. And at least a sense of promising to lighten our load. Unfortunately, so many people, once they accept Christ into their lives and they're baptized, they think that everything is gonna get better. Everything will change. That we're gonna be wrapped in this spiritual bubble wrap where nothing can hurt us. And that's not really the truth. And in a short time as pastor, I hear people disappointed with God because they thought he promised them better when they became followers of Christ. They thought he would say yes to every prayer, that he would solve every problem, heal every disease, and life would be perfect from then on. So where does this misconception come from? Because we know there's times when we do have more than we can handle on our own. So what can we take away from this? Well, God usually gets blamed for every accident, every disaster, every time there's a tragic traffic accident, every time some shooter goes on a rampage, all the natural disasters, all the suffering in our life, there's a common phrase. How could God allow this to happen? 
the reality is we are living in a broken and fallen world. The consequence of sin, suffering exists. We are suffering from the fallout, the fallout of mankind when Adam and Eve ate from the tree when they were tempted by Satan. The tree they were forbidden to eat from when they were deceived. Humanity is living broken lives in a broken place and then we blame God for the broken things that happen. We have to look back, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. The temptation that you face in this life are no different than what others experience. Every week I receive dozens of prayer requests from people and I pray for those people in those requests. And it's a picture of the heart of our community, of our congregation. So many different struggles and sicknesses, divorce, disease, addiction, financial problems, abuse, and the list goes on and on. Our suffering is real in a real part of our life. God won't give you more than you can handle. Well, tell that to a parent who's lost a child. Tell that to a child who's being abused physically or sexually by an adult. Tell that to the spouse who didn't want the divorce. Tell that to the family that's battling cancer right now. The struggle is real. Even Paul reaches tipping point, 2 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9. He says, we think you ought to know, brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. We stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. God gave Paul much more than he could handle. Not even Paul was exempt from the realities of life. We need to stop believing that Christians or somehow have an immunity to suffering. Our faith does not promise to take away suffering. We see in the passage a distinct turning point to God. Paul cites, we were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability and we could not endure. We thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die, but as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and started to rely fully and solely on God. We have to make sure we understand that, that we catch that in that scripture. They were given much more than they could endure or handle. They stopped relying on themselves. They didn't blame God for their circumstance, but they learned to trust God, lean on God during the circumstance. And that's the key thought. Satan wants you to think that you are the only person that has ever gone through what you're going through that you're alone, that this is new, that that's a lie. Most troubles in this world are simply part of a shared universal human experience, just part of living in a broken world. No one is exempt and the list is long of the sufferings, but you're not going through it alone. So as we wrap up today, what we need to remember is when we became Christians, we were not just suddenly immune to suffering. If you don't do your job, you can still get fired. You're just affected by natural disasters, mental illness, disease, sickness, as anyone else. Just as likely to have family problems, we still live in a broken and temporary world. The difference is our hope and our strength are found in Jesus. We know that God is faithful. So like I said, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and God is faithful. He will not allow us to be tempted more than we can stand. When we are tempted, we need to remember God has provided a way out. Satan wants us to believe that we're isolated in our weakness, in our fear, in our addiction, in our abuse, whatever our situation. He wants us to think that we're alone. We're the only ones going through it. We're the only ones that have been through it. But it's not true. Someone around you knows what you're going through. The fact that we're not alone means someone can walk alongside you and that God is always with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Basically, when we think God only gives us what we can handle on our own, we assume the wrong focus. 
Suffering doesn't care about our convenience. There's never a good time for life to be wrecked. But saying God will never give us more than we can handle is self-centered. It tells me I can bear whatever comes my way. If I just pull up my bootstraps, if I just get back to work, if I just try harder, we put it all on ourselves. We think we will have the ability to endure and everything will be okay. I don't need help. I can do it by myself. Where has that gotten you so far? If we think that God will never pour out trials faster than we have the ability to endure, we're fooling ourselves. This conventional or traditional wisdom points people inward and scripture points us outward towards God. As we read here in Psalms 46, one through three, God is our refuge and our strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear the earthquakes. We will not fear when the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble, let the waters surge. In Isaiah 40, 29, he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. To try and sum all this up, just remember, bad things can and will happen in our lives. They don't have to define us. There's two realizations we all need to come to in life. When we are given more than we can handle on our own, we need to realize I can't make it in life without God. And I can't make it in life without others. There are going to be times in this life that are really more than we can handle. When the hurt and pain are too much to take, we can't do it on our own. There are people going through or have been through what you are facing right now. Reach out to them. Don't let pride stop you. Don't try and do it on yourself. You don't have to do it all alone. More than anyone else, reach out to Jesus. We were never meant to struggle in this life alone. Lean on the Lord, lean on your community. Lean on the people around you. People have asked you if you need help and offered to give you help. Let them. We can get through it together. And although God will give us more than we can handle on our own, he won't give us more than we can handle with him. He gives us a way out of temptation, of temptation to quit, of temptation to just keep doing what we're doing and blaming God. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. He is our way out. Call on him. He's waiting, arms wide open. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this message. Lord, there's gonna be so many things we go through in this life that are more than we can handle by ourselves. We go up against spiritual enemies with Satan and the enemies of darkness and evil. And we can't face them alone. We need your Holy Spirit living in us and through us. We need you walking with us every step of the way. We need to stop relying on ourselves and totally rely on you, as Paul told us. Well, let us ask for the help that we need. And let us be the church that reaches out to those who are in need. Lord, we give you all the praise and honor and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys have an awesome week. I love you. We'll see you soon. I'm forgiven because you